Stephen Nash from Fix Securities with more. Uh, Stephen, warm welcome to you. Let's talk the wage cost index data. This is really showing that things could start to get ooh, painfully close to that runaway mark. Um, yeah, the, the, wage, the wage cost data was a little bit firmer than expected. Some have argued that it's evidence of an accelerating um, wages growth and that that would be a, a bother for the RBA. Um, I think that the, the realistic story is, is probably that uh, employment growth generally may have already peaked and that um, concerns about spiralling wages are probably a little bit overblown. I think the major focus right now is on the uh, global markets and what's going on there. What was really interesting though is we did see uh, construction work data which if you project out Stephen the pipeline of work is stellar now if that comes to pass it's gonna be a war for talent and that only means one thing doesn't it higher wages well I think um, yeah the, the, there's a lot of uh, construction uh, forecast particularly in the resources sector this has been a concern for the RBA for, for quite a while but I think again to some extent that's a bit of an old story the the new story for the RBA is the uh, current level of uh, conservatism with consumers and whether that is going to get any worse. Um, I think the RBA is taking a middle ground there and, and saying that uh, the, the consumer will remain cautious so that that is a moderating influence on inflation. Yeah? That's funny you're seeing it that way Stephen because could you also argue potentially almost a complete reverse that the Reserve has always signalled that it's comfortable with consumers cutting their code according to their cloth as it were, that it wants to see it and now that it is seeing it it's almost breathing big sighs of relief but yeah. it was that capex spending and tensions that was always the question mark into the end of last year particularly with those taxation issues clouding yeah. mining intentions that's looking as if it's been cleared up and now we're looking at a runaway set of numbers aren't we well uh, look i think you know the, the general uh view going into the gdp next week is that it's a close call whether we're going to get a positive or a negative number now if we get a negative number i think everyone's anticipating uh, the quarter after that to be a little bit on the negative side as well so I think right now it's you know to get too concerned about runaway growth and uh, construction is probably a little bit uh, preemptive and it's, we really need to see those numbers. Well that's interesting because the idea of being preemptive kind of comes back to that old language of ahead of the curve yeah. with the RBA. If they wait for numbers have they waited too long? Well, I think you know what the RBA want to do at the moment is is wait because you know the, the, the floods are of such a magnitude that they really have to <coughs> look through the data, and that's going to take a while. I think we've also got a continuing issue with bank funding uh, costs. I think towards the middle of the year there'll be more talk about banks going independent of the RBA. Uh, there's no talk at the moment, but I imagine that that will. Um, uh, reassert itself towards the middle of the year as funding costs uh, just rise it's a, it seems to be an inevitable rise in their average funding cost as old loans roll off does that imply as well you're not tipping much more in the way of uh, Bendigo and Adelaide's issuance when it comes to the retail bond market with other banks following suit if they're going to be using that excuse of higher offshore funding costs where's the offset well, I think for the regional banks, the retail bond market may be an exciting way to, uh, and, and a great way for them to access uh, uh, funding without involving the wholesale market. I think the, the rating agencies will like it, uh, I, and I think it, it could be quite interesting this year whether they really develop that. The major banks will probably use it as well, but not to the same extent. Uh, the problem for them. Yeah, is, there a, is there a reason, Stephen, why that would be occurring? Just explain that mismatch. Why would the big banks not avow themselves to the same extent? Well, I think the big banks view the retail bond market as being quite limited in terms of their overall funding requirements. Um, and the problem there, of course, goes back to the un underlying lack of allocation to fixed income in, in this market. And I think that's a really big issue that has to be addressed in, in a number of ways, not just, um, not just by the banks, but by, by the Treasury and by the industry. Well, yes, I know your concerns are deep-seated on that one. I'm just wondering yeah. Yeah. whether it would take a big move by the big banks to really signal um, that we had arrived at a, at a breakthrough moment here. 
Yeah, well, as you say, um, I sound like a bit of a broken yeah. record on this. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a point, though, that is clearly identifying sort of an absence in this market. So if we're talking sophisticated markets, we, we yeah. kind of lack surely all the pieces of the puzzle. We lack that critical uh, element, and that is a long bond market. Now, if you look at our, um, you know, the, the weighted average duration of the UBS credit index, it's, it's about half what it is globally. Now, for a country like Australia, which has such volatility and is reliant on commodities, it should be longer than the, the, the global average because companies will, fa will face refinancing risk. Now, some companies go offshore and they fund offshore, but it, it, it is really necessary, I think, to, to reduce that dependence on overseas funding. All right. Let's just briefly go overseas for a moment because we've got Irish elections yeah. uh, tonight our time. Just tell me how this all fits into a picture of sovereign debt concerns and, you know, further pins to drop and all that. Well, there's, a, there's been a discussion about uh, the Irish, particularly with regard to the sense that the EU is part of the problem, not part of the solution. Now, a change of government may allow this sentiment to grow and that, that could be very important for other European countries as well. So I think these Irish elections are really important for markets and really important for the uh, EU and the, in the peripheral markets right now. Dr. Stephen Nash, listen, uh, we will touch base with you into next week. There's okay. so much more we could have talked about, but you know, we'll leave it there for now. Many thanks. Thanks very much. Okay. Bye. Stephen Nash from Fig Secure.